So, Dragon, welcome first of all to Penn State, and I understand this is your first visit to our campus, so thank you for making the trip to be here. Um, really fascinating conversations today around uh, data analytics, learning analytics, and, and where we're going with this. I, I know you're interested in a similar space that, that our center is, and that is student learning and helping those um, achieve their educational goals. And I'm, and I'm interested in knowing what your thoughts might be about some of the barriers. So what, why, what might inhibit a student from learning? And, and where I want to go with that is, can you then sort of brainstorm maybe a, uh, a potential solution that might be pretty far out there? That's OK. And, and finally, we'll end up with um, what might some first incremental steps be to getting to that big goal. So if you don't mind, maybe um, introduce yourself. And then if you could uh, start with that first one, is from your experiences, what inhibits learners from from gaining their learning. Okay. Thanks, Larry. It's, it's a great pleasure to be here at Penn State. I've been enjoying the conversations today and so many exciting things and very interesting folks you have involved here, many Thank different you. projects. I'm Dragan Gashevich. I'm with Athabasca University. I'm a full professor and Canada Research Chair in Semantic and Learning Technologies there for another three weeks. And I'm going to transition then to the University of Edinburgh, where I'm going to be professor and the chair of learning analytics, another Wonderful. exciting position which is up front, and we we'll look forward to that. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks That's much. Great. Uh, so in terms of barriers, there are, of course, many different barriers that we can identify. One, one of the major barriers that is very close to my heart, and it's mm -hmm. part of the core, actually, of my research is um, study skills of students. Mm -hmm. And what we are actually seeing is that very few students are using very uh, active and uh, potent uh, study tactics. In many cases, students are using very ineffective study approaches and very ineffective uh, ways how to study. On the other hand, from the perspective of institutions, we don't really do anything or we don't do much to help students to learn how to study. Uh, for some reason, and it's been well, very well documented in the educational psychology literature, that we never really teach students how to study. We somehow expect students that they will pick that somewhere on the way of their education and that they will be developing some of these study tactics. Mm -hmm. Therefore, for me, that's the major barrier, is how to identify some of these uh, techniques. That also has to do later on with different types of instructional approaches that are typically attributed, I would say, in an incorrect way to the lack of motivation of students, that they are not willing to, for example, mm -hmm. use a certain approach. Uh, very often, uh, instructors think that it is just enough, uh, for example, to provide social space for students, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden a beautiful, great, deep discussion will happen there. Mm -hmm. And it won't happen. In many mm -hmm. cases, students and instructors say, well, I don't want to interfere into that process because I want my students to start discussing by themselves. Mm -hmm. But if, what if our students don't know how to discuss effectively? Mm -hmm. What if they are not even aware that discussion is an effective study tool? Yeah. Basically, and that basically taps into the uh, four major conditions why students are, or learners in general, are using certain study tools or not. First precondition is that they need to be, first of all and foremost, aware mm. that something is an effective tool for them to study. The second thing is, once they become aware, say, the discussion is an effective tool for them, they need to uh, be aware at the task they are studying that that tool can be applied to that particular task. So it's so a really matching up. That's the right. Two. Okay. That's right. Yeah. So in a way, it transfers. So for example, if we taught our students to discuss in one course, we need to also teach them to have higher level of transfer of that skill to some other different contexts. And the, uh, and then the next precondition for students is although they are aware and they are aware also that it is applicable to a particular task they may still not have enough skills mm -hmm. how to use that particular study tool. And then the only then, the fourth precondition for students is motivation. Mm -hmm. So if we tick these uh, three boxes, uh, first, mm -hmm. then motivation will be also much higher anyways, because students will have much higher level of self-confidence that they are able to apply a particular tool to a particular task, and they will not be wasting, wasting their time to apply it. Therefore, in many mm. cases, students are sticking just to the most ineffective study strategy, which is just, for example, reading. And reading is equal to non-reading on long-term memory. Right. Right. So we need to teach students how to study more effectively. And that's especially important for online learning, 
which is very well documented that it depends much more heavily on strong self-regulated mm. learning skills. So that's mm. one element of mm. the story. That's well, the barrier. I, I love that, and I got to tell you, that's very close to my heart as well, because as a learner, um, I struggled through, uh, I guess, a secondary ed in, in, in my college years, because I basically had one set of study skills that I tried on everything. I mean, it was the only one I had developed. Had I had options, had I learned how to better learn, I think I could have enjoyed the experience, maybe been more motivated, and maybe more successful. Exactly. And the other thing for students, it's so essential as well, is to uh, enrich their arsenal of study mm -hmm, sure. uh, more tools yeah. that they can use. And this is really important because the research also shows that it is uh, those students who are more successful when they are using more different approaches to mm -hmm. learning. So if they fail uh, with one approach to studying, mm -hmm. and if they adapt and try to uh, use some other approach to learning, mm -hmm. then they are more affected than those students who stick to a single approach right. and they basically end up in an indefinite loop of keep trying and failing at, yeah. uh, at addressing the problem. So this is a perfect segue mm -hmm. into the second question. Mm -hmm. Is uh, If you had no constraints of time or resources to develop a uh, either a pedagogical innovation or a technological innovation, mm -hmm. can you think of a method that could help? So I'm a learner, I'm in my class, how might I use this arsenal or this tool set of new strategies and skills? What, what could that look like? So first of all, if you had uh, indefinite time uh, and <laughs> resources to address this, then I would first of all start from very elementary schools and mm -hmm. start promoting some of these study tactics. Mm -hmm. And once you ingrain these study tactics with the young kids, mm -hmm. they will be promoted for the rest of the mm -hmm. life. The second thing, probably in the whole educational system, we need to promote that it is really just the approach how we study in these tools that we have in our minds, how we are studying. It's much more worth than just the content that we are trying oh, to absolutely. consume. Yeah. It is really has to do with the old Chinese uh, yeah. saying, yeah. don't give me a fish, but uh, yeah. teach me teach how. Teach me how to fish. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So it's really, that's what I would do at the systemic level. Mm. I don't think that type mm. of approach would be that expensive. Mm. However, it has to do also with something we need to talk to different schools of education and how teachers are then teaching. Uh, are prepared. Yeah. Prepared. But mm -hmm. I don't think that will be really too expensive for them, and mm -hmm. it will not really affect too much. Here and there are small lessons for students in grade 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, that's really not something which is too consuming. However, we still have many of us who are educated in the existing right. system, and we need to support ourselves. Right. right? right. And in that type of system, mm. what I would really like, and that's the type of technology that we are interested in and trying to, to work on, is to uh, establish learner profiles. Mm. These types of learner profiles are more what George Simmons likes to call uh, knowledge graphs. Mm. These profiles are not just what students know, what is the state of their knowledge, but it goes much beyond that. It goes into the understanding of what is the process. Mm -hmm. uh, Students. How do they know that? That's right. Yeah, yeah. How they actually came to that point mm. to know that. So, for example, what activities students did, what type of operations they mm. performed when they were reading a certain piece of text or they were watching a video, whether they were taking notes, what type of notes. Mm -hmm. And then going even further beyond that, uh, improving ex existing educational technology, which will be helping us uh, to track better how students interact with information. For example, better highlighting on that information. Not only that, act of highlighting will help us to understand uh, what students are highlighting, mm -hmm. but it is actually will help us understand, uh, for, for example, uh, the importance of the information they highlight. And that can also already help us to gauge the mm -hmm. level of their, for example, prior knowledge mm -hmm. and the level of the effectiveness of their study approach. For example, some students just without any strategic reason right. are highlighting everything. Right. And on the other hand, we can also assign certain tags to those highlights. Mm -hmm that can tell us about the intentions, why students are yeah. highlighting something. For example, mm. we can ask them to tag it because it's difficult yeah. Yeah. or because They think it it's is a key point or, yeah, that's, interesting. that's really interesting. Right. Yeah. And that connects us directly mm. with some of the well-established uh, education psychology mm. constructs, such as, for example, achievement goal orientation constructs mm -hmm. or uh, cognitive load measurement, potentially, etc. And with these type of information, we can then go and start actually understanding why our students are struggling mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And more importantly, we can mm -hmm. then start treating each student as an individual separately from the class aggregate. Right, right, right. right. And then based mm -hmm. on that, we will be able then to recommend students a very specific mm -hmm. uh, actionable plan of the activities they can take mm -hmm. to address the weaknesses we identified. Presently, in many cases, mm -hmm. we are un unaware or very or getting very coarse grained information about the types of activities students are taking mm -hmm. without opportunities to understand the level of student motivation or the effectiveness of the study uh, approaches they are right. taking or even the emotional state of students. For example, sure. whether they are getting really frustrated because they cannot get it. Sure. And they are not getting it because they are using very inefficient study approach right. or right. they simply are missing some information there. Yeah. And it, it could be a little small something that can help them to move beyond that. Therefore, I'm really interested in the type mm. of technology that can help us to track these types of things. That type of technology needs to be something which is easy, accessible to sure. students. So for example, something which will be easily accessible through their uh, smartphones mm -hmm. or uh, iPads, mm -hmm. so that students can easily highlight and there is no high threshold or right. the barrier for usability of that type of technology. And I think with this mm. type of technology, then we can be on a really strong way to start helping our students with a very personalized feedback. So in a way, Dragon, you've already addressed sort of that incremental approach, because mm -hmm. I heard you say you started off by talking about the need to make sure that our educators of today know uh, a variety of learning skills in order for them to teach their students, and perhaps in order for them to match up. This is the task student. Which of these learning strategies do you think will help you gain this? So that's, that's one step. The second step is that we've got to help our learners understand that there's a toolbox. Uh, and then thirdly, you talked about the idea of having this, this tool set, uh, for example, the highlighter that allows you to tag why did you select that topic. So you're not randomly picking yellow, mm -hmm. uh, but there's a reason identifying the motive behind that. Um, so would that be an incremental step toward the idea of having this sort of full tool set for students? Yes, I agree with that, and th th that's really something. So in a way, it's really important that first step that instructors need to understand that their students may not be so good at studying, mm -hmm. and they are missing that. Yeah. And, and basically, we don't have to be too aggressive or too intruding into our students' lives. Mm -hmm. We can rather be more like providing them with recommendations and the rationale why something is good for them. Yeah. Uh, providing that type of rationale, give them full kind of uh, uh, also autonomy in a sense that we can say, well, you know, we may understand upfront that this might be looking a bit odd right. or right. it may require some additional skills, right. but we can also back that up with this, some evidence. Yeah. At the same time, give opportunity that we respect students' autonomy to make that right. choice. Right. And this is what I'm saying is already building on one of my favorite uh, motivational theories, self-determination, mm -hmm. where we basically build the conditions for students to motivate themselves yeah. rather than we are intruding into something. And earlier today, somebody already raised that concern, like sure. how I can uh, or like start teaching my students how to study when they already right. have 12 or 14 years of study right. experience. Right. And of course, with this type of approach, you are much more considerate of what they already right. know and start introducing something. Obviously, that has mm. to be a buy-in from the institutions right. and that can be an additional sure. uh, confounding factor or a potentially even barrier because mm. they need to be also convinced because what is the reward system mm. in that for, for faculty to, to, sure. to buy that in. Well, I would love to be in one of your classes because I'd love to learn how to learn better. So thanks yes. for sharing your ideas. It's a pleasure to have you here and, and thank you for being with us. Pleasure.